Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the Geo Coast. Uh, here I'm standing with Oliver, who is a marine biologist, and in the early 2000s we used to share an office when we both worked at University College Cork. Hello, Oliver. Hi, Max. How are you doing? Good. Nice to see you. Great. Good to see you too. So, um, um, as I said, like Oliver is a marine biologist, and um, tell me, like, what's your current role? Are you working for the government at the moment? That's right, yeah, I work for um, a marine environment section in Department of Planning mm -hmm. and uh, I work as a marine scientist with responsibility for biodiversity. Right, okay, that sounds interesting. And like this video will be, in this video we'll try to get a kind of general uh, opinion, Oliver's opinion on generic subjects about coastal and marine ecology and biology. So we start from sure. simple terms like, sure. um, for example, can you describe to people who are not familiar with this, like what would be the main components of islands coastal ecosystem? Ooh, <laughs> it depends. In, in terms of coastal ecosystem, I suppose you've got the physical structure of the ecosystem to think about, you know, the landmass and how the, how the landmass interacts with the sea, um, bringing water and nutrients from land to the sea, for example. You also obviously have mixing waters. You have uh, the biological productivity of the sea, then meeting that landmass. Um, and in terms of the ecological components beyond the, the physics um, and the biochemistry of the water column, then you're going to have productivity. So from the smallest uh, microorganisms like um, dinoflagellates and other phytoplankton, plant-based um, plankton, which are the tiniest microscopic uh, um, biological uh, an, um, biological f flora in the mm -hmm. in the environment, right up to the largest um, mammals that we would have, the largest birds that we would have, the likes of gannet, for example, and seabirds would be you know among the largest seabirds, mm -hmm. and we'd also have you know whales, dolphins, porpoises, and other species. Some of which, some of the, even the very large whales like fin whales, come in mm -hmm. quite close to the coast. So. There are all sorts of elements in between those, those two um, on the biological side. And of course you, have, you also have in the coastal zone things like kelp forest, um, you know, small invertebrates clinging to rocky shores and, and so on. So it's really mm -hmm. diverse. And that's not mentioning the human species which makes noise in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're one of the large mammals that are out there too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Oliver, how would you describe in simple words the difference between coastal and marine biology and ecology? What is the difference between these terms? Good question. I suppose ecology covers more um, how all the different systems that are there interact with, with each other mm -hmm. um, and how the balance of nature, including humans' role in, in the natural environment, how that works out. Um, so the different processes, different systems, you know, maybe competition for food, um, uh, you know, avoidance of predators, um, how the system deals with contamination, for example, um, deals with storminess, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things are very much part of the ecology, whereas okay. the marine biology is very much focused on biological components of the, the, of the exactly, whether plant or animal. Um, so ecology is living environment, biology is who is living correct. in Correct, it, it, it integrates environment in a, in a larger mm. way than just plants and animals, yeah. Mm -hmm. And from the point of view of biological diversity, uh, what coastal type would be more important, rocky or sandy? Well, I think that's, <laughs> I'll be diplomatic here, but I, th I think it very much depends where you're, where you're coming from. When you say important, do you mean economically important? Do you mean Not biologically important? From the point of view, like, um, from the point of view, biological diversity. Yes. W which coastal type has, has more biological diversity, rocky or sandy? Yeah, I would say it's probably rocky, in general, rocky shore. Mm -hmm. um, although there are some fantastic organisms that are well adapted to sandy and muddy shores. Um, but rocky shore can take, take on board not only, um, not only dynamic and exposed environments, but also more sheltered environments that happen to be rocky as well. It's very much like the, where we are here. There are parts of this shoreline here that are very exposed and are cut by the ocean. And then there are parts around the corner um, of this bay here in Cork where you have more sheltered environments. And so you have quite an array of, of plant and animal species that can avail of the opportunities there. In, in, in sandy environments, they tend to be more sheltered. Um, 
and depositional and less uh, there's less variety in the conditions I, th I think that mm -hmm. they're exposed mm -hmm. to in, in general. And here we're standing in Novel Cove yeah and um, I know that you grew up in this area and probably like you swam and explored this area in great detail so what can you and then you went on studying marine biology so now from the point of marine biologist uh, what can you tell me about the ecology and biology of this particular area well this this is yeah this place is quite close to my heart it's it's only a couple of miles from where we lived so um we would come here in the summertime and hang out go fishing mm. go swimming go snorkeling and that so part of my growing up would have been being exposed to this environment and discovering what what there is to see mm -hmm. and and of course the sea that we have here is very you know in in the coastline it's prone to to differences depending on tide yes. so sometimes you'd come here the tide is in and the water looks very deep and things that you might be interested in are, are unavailable because they're too deep mm -hmm. and then you come at low tide and spring tide and you know there are rock pools that you didn't see before and you can dig around in them so so uh, there's fantastic life here, you know, between anemones and starfish, right up to some caves around the corner here from this cove where there are seals that produce mm -hmm. pups in the, in the winter time. And uh, so we would have discovered those for ourselves some many years ago. And, uh, and it would have been a good stimulant for me to continue on and study mm -hmm. marine science and, and that in Cork. Are there seabirds on this cliff? Or not? Yeah, you do get fulmers. You do get fulmers around here um, mm -hmm. and also some kittiwakes. And also not far out to sea, we'd have a, an awful lot of bird, bird traffic. You get gannets and, and um, in fact, there's a, a gull overhead there, a young gull overhead there, lesser blackback gull. Mm -hmm. um, but we get gannets and we get a lot of Manx shearwaters traveling through. We're not far from the old head of Kinsale here, which is a, a promontory sticking quite far out into the Celtic Sea. Mm -hmm. And you, you do, if you, if you take a line between Ballycotton Island and the old head of Kinsale and you, you sail out to that line, you get an awful lot of species that are traveling in and out of the Celtic Sea. So mm -hmm. a lot of common dolphins, porpoises, so some shark species, some area, like basking that. sharks and blue sharks even a little further out mm -hmm. and, um, and that. So there's really quite a variety of things right here, you know, just within a couple of miles of, of where we're standing. Um, as, as you mentioned sharks, w can we say that shark is the largest fish in the ocean? Is it technically a fish? It's not a mammal. Yes, like yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a fish. Yeah, yeah, it's a cartilaginous fish. Yeah. And, and like, what are the chances? Like a lot of, many people are fascinated with sharks, but at the same time, they're afraid of sharks. So what are the chances of meeting a shark in coastal waters when you go swimming or surfing? Pretty slim, quite close to the coast mm. in, in, uh, in, even on the south coast where the water is maybe a little bit warmer. Um, we do get basking sharks in here. In fact, we <laughs> one of the college things we did was was recover a basking shark carcass that had got tangled in the net many years ago and brought it ashore to measure it. And, mm -hmm. and that is some of the students in, in zoology in, in Cork and, and myself did that. And that was good fun, some friends and I. Um, and you do get them. And again, they're quite close to the coast, but it tends to be at certain times of the year. It tends to be kind of in early to mid spring mm -hmm. um, and early summer. And then they seem to disappear and they're found in other parts of the coast. And so your, you your chances of... You oh yeah, yeah. You actually saw them close enough? Like yeah, yeah, we actually... Diving we used to, with the scuba diving? We used to windsurf. Not? We used to yeah. do a lot of windsurfing yes. here as kids. And um, I remember very distinctly sa sailing out just about a kilometer from shore. Mm with uh, my brother and um, we were off just on our own, no, no boats around and we saw a very large fin <laughs> coming up in front of us and we you know, got spooked by it. It was quite a big, big shark. So you can encounter them. Um, they tend to be like most things that are on the water or, or at the surface of the water yeah. in okay, Ireland. They tend to be difficult to see because you know, the, we don't get calm mm -hmm. seas very, very often. So it can be difficult to see a fin. Can they attack a person? Not at all, no, no. If basking surfing, sharks, not yeah. at all. No, basking sharks are very docile. They're, they're filter feeders, so they swim around near the surface or below the surface with their mouths wide open. And the, it can be a quite a large mouth. Um, so similar to whales, yeah? Same mechanism? Yeah. Um, more like whale sharks, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, the big tropical, the huge tropical sharks mm -hmm. that, that are there in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific. They, they swim around with their mouths open and they're basically filter mm -hmm. feeding. And basking sharks do the same thing. Um, 
So they they don't have teeth. They're they're totally harmless. And Do we have the any size sharks? makes them makes them spook you a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, we we don't get large sharks that were that are this so close no, to the coast other no, than no basking sharks, sharks. With teeth, which can actually eat the person. No? I think, I mean, there are there are stories, of course, during the Second World War, of of shark attacks in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. But again, they would tend to be maybe opportunistic or people who who were injured and who were far offshore. Right, right. Um, but we do have, I mean, there was a recent survey done in, in Ireland um, using aerial survey methods that estimated for the f first time using aerial survey methods mm. estimated the population of blue sharks out yes. there. So there are sharks out there in the ocean, but they tend to be further offshore, mm -hmm. not, not in and around the coast where, where people are swimming. So the chances of an encounter, to get back to your question, the chances of an encounter more likely to be basking shark, more mm -hmm. likely to be in spring or early summer and uh, harmless. Yes.